All right, we are talking with Adrian Marie Brown this afternoon, one of Detroit's more interesting thinkers. How are you, Adrian? I'm very good. Welcome to Happy Frog. Thank you. I want to ask you three questions. We're winding down summer, and I wanted to ask you what you're reading, what you're thinking about, and what are you working on. So, okay. first of all, what have you been reading this summer? This summer, I had a lot of science fiction reading this summer. Um, so I reread a few of Octavia Butler's works, mm -hmm. um, Lilith's Brood and the Xenogenesis series. Um, I consumed The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin and The Broken Kingdoms, which is her follow-up to that. And then I've, I'm on the fifth book of the Game of Thrones series now, The Songs of Ice and Fire. So p for people who aren't familiar with Octavia Butler's mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. could you just give folks a quick slice of what, what's so compelling about her work that draws you to it? Yeah, I, I always talk about Octavia Butler as a prophet. She wrote science fiction from the perspective of a woman of color. Uh, most of her work is, is seeing what a woman of color would do in certain circumstances of apocalypse. Um, so if the society was breaking down, if the earth was destroyed, um, if you had to fuse with alien life species, what would it look like? Um, a lot of her writing is very spiritually based, spiritually grounded, um, and it's enticing and exciting, and you can very much imagine yourself in the stories. And I've got almost everyone I know now trying to read her work with me so that we can have conversations about the strategies that she talks about in her work and how can we apply those to the organizing that we're doing in real life. Well, that's a perfect segue. Yeah. So in what ways um, is your reading of Octavia Butler and other things mm -hmm. um, informing your thinking about how it might relate to Detroit? What, what kind of mm -hmm. things um, would bring us there? I think Detroit is definitely in this sort of post-apocalyptic space already um, in a lot of ways. So her strategies very much appeal to me and, and as ways that we can think about how do we survive in Detroit? What does it mean to be spiritually rooted in a place that has a lot of de death and destruction around? Um, how do we start to grow something new but really grow it in our hearts and minds instead of thinking only of the physical structures in which we exist? I feel like Detroit is something that's in your heart or that's in your soul um, more than it's like the best house you ever had or whatever. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that's influencing me a lot. The Game of Thrones series has been really influencing how I think about politics um, and giving me a whole different way of thinking about what is the power dynamic and the power structure in Detroit? Who actually has power? What does it mean to hold a position versus to actually have power? And I feel like right now the people in Detroit are really gaining a lot of power, whereas those who are holding those positions, those positions are becoming emptier and emptier of any true power, mm -hmm. uh, which is exciting to me. And what kinds uh, of things are you working on uh, going into the fall? I am deeply embedded in working on digital justice work through the Detroit Digital Justice Coalition and all this Detroit future training. Um, just did a facilitation workshop for a set of artists who are going to be going into schools and working in public schools with students. And I'm working on the food justice task force work. Um, so communication is a fundamental human right and food is this fundamental human right and trying to figure out the cross-sections of those two things and what would it look like in Detroit if every single person had the space and the skill set to tell their own story and to grow their own food. So. Well, it's harvest yeah. time in Detroit and I think yes. we're going to have a, a bumper crop this year. I think so. So uh, it's a pretty exciting time. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time Thank today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.